What's up guys? So today I wanted to make a video explaining something that kind of annoys me, and that is the fact that every, I mean, I don't know if it's just me or if it's because I've been looking up news articles to maybe like post videos about and talk about, but I have just been flooded with all of these articles about asteroids and, and deadly apocalyptic type events, and the the titles themselves are are the problem that I have. They're just so dramatic and so just you have to click it because you want to know are we going to die kind of things. And it's just it's super annoying because you open it, you read it, and then you're like, oh well, that wasn't so bad. Um, it's fine that they do that. I, I understand why they do that. It's just to get more views and it kind of it's just a, an annoying thing that they do, right? Um, so what I wanted to do today was just talk about the fact that they're doing this, and I wanted to um, look at an article that I that I've pulled up and thought that I would just go through. So that's what we're gonna do. So what I what I have right here is the is, is an article. Asteroid Danger. Top NASA Chief issues grave warning of deadly collision. Not Hollywood. Alright. So, I mean, okay, so there has been a lot of near misses lately that have spooked the scientific community, right? They're, they're, we're supposed to have had identified 90% of the asteroids that are, I guess would be world killers, I think is the, the, the level that they call them. But, with that being said, I don't think that you need an article name like this so that you get people to click on it and, you know, scare people. The reason that I, I don't like these titles here is that a lot of the times, I mean, for me when I was growing up, I would read these these articles and I, would, I would, wouldn't click them because they scared me and I just thought ignorance was bliss and that was all I needed. Um, so I basically would a... Uh, uh, look at these articles and I wouldn't click them and then I would just ruminate on the, the, the idea that they were trying to spread like and it, it was just a mass panic kind of thing in my head it, it was I, I wouldn't look up anything related to that I would just sit for the next couple of days I wouldn't even know oh well when is it supposed to happen uh, I would sit for like three days thinking that the world was gonna end and it was terrifying to me and I just hated it and I mean maybe that says something about me maybe I'm just a bit paranoid I don't really think that way anymore but when I was growing up I wish somebody had told me like just read the article and you'll find out that it's probably fine and even if it does say that like oh, oh, this might be a thing you just do a little research ignorance is not bliss because it's ignorance is anxiety ignorance is anxiety <laughs> that's what happened for me not Hollywood all right um, though it's predicted no collision could occur oh well thanks for telling me now okay I mean I younger me would have not made it to this point and I would have been just nope bye and then thought that it would have been that would have been it I just would have thought that was it yep we're done bye <laughs> okay so uh, those pr predicted no collision could occur for the next century at least mr. Bur Bridenstein said there is still a chance okay he was nominated to serve as NASA administrator by Donald Trump oh, boy Having previously served on the Committee on Science, Space, and Technology while a Republican congressman in Oklahoma. Okay, so that just reads funny. There should be like more punctuation there, I think. Anyways, uh, Mr. Breidenstein said, We have to make sure that people understand that this is not about Hollywood. It's not about the movies. This is about ultimately protecting the only planet we know right now to host life, and that is planet Earth. Okay, I get that. It's very... Asteroid impacts are one of the biggest most deadly things that could happen, but also some of the most preventable if we are given enough time. Uh, at least that's what I'm, I'm told. <laughs> I'm assuming that that's true because trajectories, basically you just shift the trajectory, trajectory a little bit uh, way down the way and then you're good to go for a bit. Um, but the thing is, is that a lot of these methods, I mean, they've never been tested because we've never had to use them. So, I... <laughs> I'm sure they're fine. I mean, it, it makes sense to me that you can prevent it. But the thing is, you have to spot them. There, there hasn't been as much work towards trying to spot these things as they probably should have. There should be. At least that's what some of the 
the scientists that I've talked to, some of the professors basically at my other schools have said about it was that there's not enough money going into or not enough time going into looking for asteroids that could wipe out, you know, the whole Earth, uh, or at least the human population. Yeah. So anyways, I understand why they want to do that. I understand why they're trying to talk about these. But also, don't, don't, don't use clickbaity titles. That's annoying. Uh, the, though Mr. Bridenstine lacks formal qualifications in science, well, Trump administration, yeah, anyways. He was an executive director at the Tulsa Air and Space Museum. He uh, also served in the U.S. Navy. NASA is in the process of developing the double asteroid redirection test, so basically something that you can use to redirect the trajectory or, or just shift the trajectory of an as incoming asteroid. This is the guy. This is Jim Bridenstine. Joy. Cool. He looks happy. So, I guess I don't really need to spend much time on this. This is basically just a... Actually, earthquake hits during the President Harris speech. Joy. I said Ch Chile. Chile. Not Chile. Uh, anyways. Okay, so yeah, I don't think I need to spend much time. DART will attempt to redirect asteroids before they can collide with Earth. The project will hope to use a special spacecraft and launch test in summer 2021. It will attempt to knock one of the Didymos asteroids out of orbit. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's, that's actually pretty cool. I didn't know about that. The project will hope to use a special spacecraft and launch a test in summer 2021 and will attempt to knock one of the Didymos asteroids out of orbit. The project will occur in September 2022. What? So basically, they launch in 2021, and they will make contact with the asteroid in 20, September 2022, I guess. That's kind of cool. That's interesting to know. Um, yeah, like these these right here, you can see what I'm talking about. Asteroid tsunami. Why scientists offer dire warning to U.S. coast. This article I read earlier this week, and it had a very different title. It was very, it read very much like imminent t tidal wave from impactor in the, the Pacific Ocean scientists warn of tsunami or some weird like super annoying clickbaity title that i mean i i clicked it because it's like yeah okay well let me see what that's about and i mean and like i said younger me would have been like nope bye we're gonna die you know that's it we're done and then asteroid warning nasa predict huge rocks to storm past earth okay so that's fine this one's not so bad this is talking about a asteroid that's supposed to do a nearby pass and it's supposed to be like twice as tall as this building here and that's an asteroid warning nasa predicts rock twice as big as the shard to storm past earth and yeah i don't know i, I understand that this article is linking me to a bunch of different articles that are related to asteroids but the the, the reason that i bring this up is because my phone has suggested these similar articles to me and it, it was like more threatening and the, the titles that they had for those articles were different earlier in the week. I don't know if they do that on purpose. If they, they make a really scary title when they first release the article and then uh, I don't know if that is something that they do to make they get more views that way. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Didymos, a 26, 24 foot... Oh! <laughs> heard that wrong. Didymos A is 26, uh, 2,624 feet across, so 0.4 miles. Poses no threat to Earth until we knock it out of orbit. No, I don't know. No. Uh, this width means it's wider than the Burj Khalifa is tall. Wait. It's wider than... No. What? Total height of 829 meters. No. You're lying. Lying. Okay, so it's still huge, but it's not wider than it's tall. At least by this standard. And I trust this because it's Google. I don't trust you because you're not Google. Asteroid apocalypse warning. Rock shooting towards Earth. See, this is annoying. That. That right there. Warning. All caps. Apocalypse. Uh, that would have made me poop my freaking pants. But I want to click this real quick. Let's just right click that, open the new tab. Let's just check this out. Because I'm curious now. Let me ask you so, the question that everybody wants to know. What are the odds 
What is the possibility that we, as inhabitants of this planet, uh, could be hit by a, an asteroid at any given time? <clears throat> well, the odds are higher than most people think. Um, for anybody who's paying attention to this sort of thing, uh, there is regularly uh, near misses. Uh, last month there was one, <clears throat> pretty much on a, on a like a monthly basis. There will be uh, some of this cosmic debris that is flying by in the. So on a monthly basis, is this only 36 seconds long? Am I almost done with it? Okay. Well, so he says on a monthly basis we have near misses. Uh, so it's much more likely than we think. But that, that means that on a monthly basis, this is going on, like we always have these happening. So I get it, it's important to know because it is the, the risk involved with just allowing something like this to hit the earth because we were not focusing on it. That's <laughs> something that we could prevent that we didn't because we didn't just didn't spend enough time because we didn't think it could happen. I get it, That's, that would be, what's the word, ironic or oxymoronic? No. Ignorant. I don't know. I don't know what word I'm looking for. But this guy's he wanted to point out that it, it's much more likely than we think. Ariana Grande moved when asked about the Manchester. I couldn't area. really Great. That's completely unrelated. Asteroid apocalypse warning rock bigger than blah blah blah. UFO sighting giant alien ship on the moon is one hundred percent proof of extraterrestrial life. Life on Mars, alien hunters spot statues on the red planet. Okay, <laughs> I guess I'm going off on a tangent here. This right here, I am assuming what they did is they took a picture of Mars. Oh God, am I going down the rabbit hole? Okay, I'm going down the rabbit hole. Open link and new tab. Life on Mars, question mark? Alien hunter spot statue on the red planet, shock claim. Shock claim, I wonder if that's... This thing... Okay. Give me a second to listen to you. I don't know if, so I see a shot claim on this a lot, and I think that that might be maybe the way that, so I might have, I might have just stumbled across something that they're doing that actually is good, and that's like shot claim, and so in the title they're including something that says, by the way, this is a title for the purposes of shocking people, so shot claim. That might actually be something that they're doing to, to prevent people from being like me and having anxiety attacks when they read something like that, at least when I was younger. <laughs> so that's good. I'm glad actually to have caught on to that, perhaps. Perhaps. Maybe that's something that they're doing for that. Um, okay, so Mars Anomaly. NASA images reveal manufactured object. The uh, saw. So this is like a streamer, I guess. 12, which is the uh, 2312th day that the rover's been on Mars. Uh, etched like they're stitched images they're supposed to load for the for the rover and later on we'll get the color neville today neville had a great color version out there that he did for his giga fan and this is where i saw it i was just what? going no. through the uh basically going through the um, groups today checking out the uh I mean, all of us have the whole ufa team like what's up in the sky group on facebook uh there's get the to it space okay out there Kate, i just want to put it in photoshop blurred it a little bit here's what it looked like you see that that hatching that nasa kind of throws at you okay so yeah he talks about hatching on the display oh did i screw it up well anyways he talks about hatching which i guess is in his head uh what nasa does to make sure that you don't understand what's going on in their pictures by analyzing images from nasa some conspiracy theorists believe they have spotted some odd anomalies on mars in the hills of the red planet alien hunters spotted what looks like a humanoid figure standing in the sandy dunes blah blah blah, blah. life on mars alien hunters spot a statue can i see like yeah the full thing i mean like this is weird right this is a low resolution picture they probably zoomed in super far to get to that point to see that but there's also no perspective of height here i don't know this is just silly to make absolute claims based on a picture that is this grainy i mean that's weird anyways so this kind of thing happens too you have basically videos of people that or not videos you have articles of people claiming these big things and, and you're not really sure what it is that they're looking at and you don't you're not really not really fact checking anything so 
Back to the main article. Opponents criticized Mr. Bernstein's appointment as the first elected official to become NASA administrator as he was a climate change denier. This is really annoying to me. I don't understand why you can have somebody in an administrative position for NASA who is a climate change denier. Right. That's, I mean, climate change is a thing. I don't care who you are, what, what you think about it. Climate change is a thing. Is it a problem that needs to be immediately addressed? I don't have enough information to talk about it. But I know it is a thing. I know that it's something that we need to be careful with. Uh, anyways, however, at Town Hall, uh, the agency's headquarters, Mr. Bernstein said his views had changed. I fully believe and know that the climate is changing. Ah, well then, that's very nice. It's very nice that he's changed. This shows that he is capable of uh, thought and reflection. I also know that we humans beings are contributing to it in a major way. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. We're putting it into the atmosphere in volumes that we haven't seen and that the greenhouse gas is warming the planet that is absolutely happening and we are responsible for it. Oh, well that's cool. I don't know what this has to do with an article about asteroid impacts. Asteroid danger. Not sure what it has to do with climate change, but I'm glad to see that this guy has changed his mind about it. Uh, that's really cool. Is there anything else left about this article? No. There's nothing left in this article. So this article says, no worries, we had a really big, uh, scary title, Don't, but don't worry about it, uh, I guess. And then they went about climate change, and they finished with climate change. Interesting. Black hole shock, rogue black hole is as big as Jupiter is rampaging through the Milky Way. As big as Jupiter. I was going to say, that's not big enough to be a black hole, but I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. This NASA asteroid danger, 2700 megaton asteroid, might hit Earth this October. Megatons. Is this the same thing? So, this is a longer clip of the guy we just saw. Can I perhaps hear him? Well, <clears throat> what you have to bear in mind is that Tunguska object of um, 1908 was uh, probably a piece uh, that had spalled off of Comet Anki. It was about 150 feet in diameter, roughly. And when it came into the atmosphere, it uh, was break by the, because it's moving so fast, the atmosphere piles up in front of it. And the thing explodes, and the estimate of the energy released during that explosion is about equivalent to a 15 megaton hydrogen bomb. Yeah. So uh, that's a- Yeah, that was actually a significant <laughs> asteroid impact, and it was really, really big. So this was, this was an event in 1908. Uh, and as you can see, uh, like it, it basically looked like uh, an entire like, atomic bomb went off, and this is, I guess, 100 years later, it, nothing's growing there. But like these were the pictures taken at the time of the event, and it, it just flattened a bunch of trees. And flattening 2,000 square kilometers of forest. Wow. See, I mean, I remember reading about this a while back, uh, the object is thought to have disintegrated at an altitude of 5 to 10 kilometers. So this was even just, it, like, there was no impact. It deteriorated in, I guess, as this guy was saying, a Carlson, I, I guess. Roughly. And when it came into the atmosphere, it, it broke uh, up. was break by the, because it's moving so fast, the atmosphere piles up right. in front of it. And the thing explodes, and the estimate of the energy released during that explosion is about equivalent to a 15 megaton hydrogen bomb. So wow. yeah, that's a so it didn't even hit the Earth, but it disintegrated with that much energy. The 15 megaton atomic bomb. Don't get me wrong, that's it's, that's a lot of energy. It's a it's a smaller atomic bomb, but it is a lot of energy to create just by disintegration. <laughs> you know what I mean? About the same size as the largest uh, nuclear warheads in the American arsenal during the peak of the Cold War. No, that's not true. Fifteen. The peak. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, let's just get through it. Um. Now, a 15 megaton hydrogen bomb essentially could take out any urban area. So, yeah. if you had a, a, an, uh, an event equivalent to the Tunguska event of 1908 over a p densely populated area, it, you'd probably have millions of casualties. Basically, what he's saying is that 
well, an asteroid or a, a, an explosion like that would be similar to basically dropping a bomb. If you had something like that happen, then it wouldn't be good. But they call those kinds of events city killers, you know, that something that big. The yeah, asteroid, that was a funny one too, because uh, there was so many, there was so much involved with this this asteroid when it came past. It, it's it's the asteroid that came from interstellar space, so basically out of our solar system into it and then out. And a lot of people speculated because it was shaped so funny that it was an alien spacecraft because it was like this really long and thin object. But that at the time was also, it had a bunch of articles out there that was just, oh, we're <laughs> gonna be visited by aliens and it was Click, very clickbaity. Anyways, so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. Like these these different things, asteroid warning, Earth experiences a near miss on a monthly basis. So I'm wondering if this is the face of the guy that's kind of causing all this, all these articles to come out, or is he, it's some reputable scientist sells us. And he probably is. I'm not trying to belittle him, but but they're. They're saying that there's some scientist that's telling them that, oh my gosh, we got we got to be careful, which is true, but I think there's a better way to handle that. <laughs> so, anyways, I think that's all I really wanted to talk about today. So, I'll probably end it here. And if you like that, uh, you feel free to like, subscribe, and if you really wanted to check out some more of my content, watch the video that I made last week about aliens that are coming to get us. Enjoy. <laughs>